Hello, I'm Rola Haj Ali. I'm professor of medicine and the vice chair of the Department of Rheumatic and Immunologic Disease and the associate director for the Vasculitis Center at the Cleveland Clinic. I'm going to talk today about CNS vasculitis and you were wondering why would you consider this rare topic. It's actually because this comes up a lot on your differential diagnosis in multiple scenarios such as a patient coming with unexplained neurologic deficit, recurrent or initial stroke in a patient with no vascular risk factor or unexplained vasculopathy on cerebrovascular imaging or neuroinflammatory process or in a patient with systemic immune mediated inflammatory diseases with neurologic deficit. And I'll share with you a case that was referred to us with a four year history of primary CNS vasculitis, which is resistant to treatment. His initial presentation was headaches and cognitive and personality changes with focal neurologic deficit with this extensive changes on the MRI, as you can see here. So after his presentation, he had an extensive workup that included CSF, which was inflammatory with negative culture. And then this led to brain biopsy that showed small vessel vasculopathy with necrosis. There was no systemic disease. His serology was all negative. And because of this biopsy and lack of other explanation of his brain pathology, he was treated as CNS vasculitis and started on cyclophosphamide and steroid, then maintained on mycophenolate. During his course, he had multiple complications, including DVT, blurred vision, hypercalcemia, and worsening liver and kidney disease. Then he was continuing on mycophenolate and prednisone, but he had worsening neurologic deficit and his MRI showed new lesions and rituximab was added to mycophenolate. Then both were stopped because of the severe anemia. And then at that time he had worsening brain MRI and he had a second round of treatment with cyclophosphamide and high dose prednisone. And despite of this second round of cyclophosphamide, his brain lesion progressed. His profile showed mildly elevated liver function tests and kidney function tests, abnormal CSF with an inflammatory process with negative culture and negative serology. Pathology included brain, liver, and renal biopsy, no inflammatory changes, but vasculopathy in the brain as well as the renal biopsy and necrosis on his brain biopsy. So in summary, this is a 50 year old with four year history of brain lesion with biopsy consistent with vasculopathy and necrosis. He had an inflammatory CSF with negative cultures. He had involvement in his vision, kidney, liver, and hematologic system. And he progressed despite treatment with cyclophosphamide, rituximab, and mycophenolate. His fluorescent angiogram solved multiple area of non-perfusion, as you can see here in his fluorescent angiogram. So when we saw the patient and assessed him, we had multiple red flags. Failure to respond to cyclophosphamide, no inflammation on brain pathology, finding of ocular disease and other systemic findings. So we start looking for other conditions that could mimic CNS vasculitis. Definitely this is not infection, given the four year history as well as this is not a malignancy, given the chronicity of the disease and the lack of malignancy on pathology. So we start looking for genetic diseases and we check for TREX1 mutation, which was positive. And his final diagnosis was retinal vasculopathy with cerebral leukoencephalopathy and systemic manifestation, which is a rare and uniformly fatal genetic disease that affects the microvasculature of the brain and the eye. Onset is between 35 and 50 years, and it's caused by somatic autosomal dominant or rarely de novo mutation of the TREX gene, which is involved in DNA repair. And main feature are microinfarct in the brain leading to encephalopathy and visual deterioration or visual veal defect caused by vascular retinopathy. And other organ involvement can occur, such as liver, renal, like in our patient and anemia. Other include migraine, intestinal, renal, and renal phenomena. But these can be overlooked, and sometimes people cannot put all the picture together. So the take home message is to make sure in a patient who is not responding to typical treatment to revisit the diagnosis and exclude the mimics. And that's what we did in this case. Thank you for listening.